starting to the top right of Fruitland. We have the Protoss player starting for Axiom Acer here. It's the captain, it is. Axiom Prank. Oh, captain, my captain. The player coach here. Crank, always a reliable force for the team. Always putting in a lot of effort. Puts himself out here as the first player against a Terran that we haven't seen for a long time. The first player for his team today, it is. So last. Comes out first, though. Yeah. If he's got the pink mouse, I noticed this. I know you have Parting's pink mouse. Yeah. It's uh, one of the esports horcruxes that exists, but... Uh, exactly. That's definitely one of the esports horcruxes, and it's worth $125,000. That's wow. the price money they want. Oh, Canada, got... Australia, and another Aussie. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. Good day, Aussie Esports. Um, uh, really, we have to we have to actually uh, put in a requirement in that if you are from Australia and you're on a studio and you write cheerful, you have to mention the city where you're from as well. You cannot just say like you're from Australia. You I mean, that's a continent that's pretty big. It's kind of a big island over there. You have uh, to so say like at, at least at least East Coast, like sit more the Melbourne person, more of a Sydney person, or actually from Perth. Well, well, this guy's from Hawaii, yeah. yeah. He's from Hawaii, and uh, I actually have not had the chance to go to Hawaii yet. That's something I will do before I die, at least like, I hope. Why would you go to Seoul like in the winter when you're actually from Hawaii? That sounds like horrible. Well, because StarCraft, man. Yeah, but you can also like enjoy StarCraft in the summer. At least the weather's a little bit better, you know? Yeah, I suppose that's true. But we have fruits, because we're on Fruitland, so that's already worth a trip. Yeah, and CC first, no probe scout from Crank, so Crank actually playing a little bit risky, which is actually kind of unusual for him. And also against a player like Last, where it's really hard to study his playstyle, I'm actually a little bit surprised by this. One of the things that we have, by the way, is also the new patch. So we have a couple of changes, very subtle changes, and we still have to find out how they come into play. But one of them is that the speed for the Oracle was, of course, by now increased, amongst other things. So the Oracle is actually a, was already a very good opening in the past. You proxy your Stargate and try to be a little bit aggressive with it. But the Oracle right now, with the additional speed, can actually escape a little bit easier. So as long as you keep it alive, you always have this threat towards the base of the Terran player. And that's something that comes in really, really handy. So we could see an Oracle opening here for Crank. Uh, we'll have to find out what exactly he has in mind. Yeah, uh, Oracle opening is actually getting so much stronger because of this. It looks like we're just going to see some early pressure into a fast nexus here by Crank. He's chrono boosting out his gateway units. He sees the bunker. But he does not check and see the double barracks, and the double barracks on the main base is pretty rare for this matchup right now as a follow-up, so uh, not seeing this is actually a little bit painful for him because there's going to be a little bit faster marine pressure than he expects, and if he uses any of his Mothership Core energy early on, then it's going to be a little bit tougher to defend that. If you're a little bit newer to the map and you're just wondering what it is all about, it's all about the lemons here, and we're actually not joking. Like, there are two lemons on the map that you can harvest. You have to take them down, and then uh, they reveal kind of gold crystals and they are worth 500 minerals so if you dominate and you have the control over the map you can always go for the lemons and get this extra mineral income and yep once again this is no joke people are always thinking we're kidding when we talk about this but this is actually one of the unique things that we have on this map yeah it's true it's uh, unique to really all maps they're using competitive play and the mothership core gets chased away right away but he does see very importantly that there are a fast there's a fast fall of the marines and this could be for oracles like exactly. we talked about before it looks very likely here yeah if you let those if you let the probe close by then usually you want to proxy something and it makes a lot of sense to go for the stargate here and then just go for an oracle and even if it's a little bit later with the edit speed you can just be so annoying you pick up a stray marine here and there you have, have a look at some scds that might just build a few buildings and there's the stargate so no surprises here Crank testing out the new patch with a bit of a different opening on the other hand. Not going for the Stargate right away, going for the expansion first. Yeah, delayed Stargate as you can call it. Now the Forge here is really nice because it gives you upgrades to go into a nice fall up afterwards. You also can get a cannon up at your natural if there's a big fall up. And in this case, it's going to be a pretty aggressive fall up with three barracks. This is actually pretty good at defending the Oracle as well because you have so many Marines and you have uh, the ability to split them between bases. You got also can get the turret up with that eBay. The problem is that the Oracle appearing in your base at first could do so much damage already. If you do not have a missile turret in the mineral line and there are no Marines present, maybe they are all in the low ground guarding the natural, then the Oracle in the main base. If you miss that for a second, then suddenly you lose so many harvesters. And it's already on the production tab. So as expected, Oracle from Crank here. Pretty good position and a very straightforward line into the, the mineral line in the main base of Lab. Yeah, and he actually knows the timing. You can see very clearly here that he's going to go ahead and send these Marines up. He knows that either an Oracle will come into his base in a few seconds or an Observer, in which case both uh, the, both reasons would allow you to have Marines there to defend. Or rather, if you have Marines there, it will allow you to defend. So turret goes up here as well. Looks like he was killing Strawberries, but he's just killing the plate. Yeah, you don't kill Strawberries. He actually eats them. Yeah, generally. Zealots, can they eat? That's a good question that 
We don't have time to answer because here comes the Oracle. Yeah, Oracle is moving in. The Marines already spotting it immediately. Nice reaction here by Lass. Good job so far. And here we have the stray SUV that was talking about earlier. Just you pick what you get. Yeah, exactly. And he only makes one, which forces turrets, which costs money. And he can use that Oracle to so much good effect. You know, picking this Marine off, not very energy efficient, but it doesn't matter. He'll be able to come back with the Oracle later and use uh, it for detection. Yeah. He can use it for revealing units, so you can always know where the dropships are. The Oracle basically is now the Ferrari amongst the uh, units that Protoss have, and uh, that speed boost helped so much. But yeah. against the missile turret, you still have to be careful because it is still very, very squishy. And Crank is heading into Twilight Council and then straight into the Temple Archive, which is something that we see a lot after an Oracle proxy. You can go straight into the Archons, you can go for Storm, you have the charge lots if you want them. So there are a lot of follow-ups that you can go for, and that is going to help you a whole lot. Yeah, and the reason why this is such a good follow-up is because the Oracle keeps the Terran player occupied, it keeps him in his base for a little bit longer. He wants to be out pressuring with his Marines. He went triple barracks, so he really wants to get out there and do some damage, but because there's one Oracle even, Moving out is not a safe idea, and this allows the Pros player, Crank in this case, to tech up like crazy, spending all of his gas on tech. He has basically no gate, he's adding them now, but he's getting plus two armor, he's getting charged through the Temple Archives. That's so much gas that if there was an attack, he would have to use and making sentries to defend, but with this Oracle, just one Oracle, it keeps the Terran player occupied. Yeah, Crank in this particular scenario is relying on one Forge. We've seen double Forge openings after heading into the expansion and the proxy Stargate, but in this case we have him with just cranking out those uh, armor upgrades, and that will of course especially make those zealots very beefy that are at the front trying to tank the damage and also pushing the line of bio units back. The Oracle is still alive, and this is one of the great things in the new patch. It's so much easier to keep it alive and to keep it a constant threat. Not only an option to scout what's going on, but always the possibility of the Oracle just trying to sneak into the mineral line and do damage. Yeah. And uh, with the Oracle, he can also use the Revelation, but it's actually Last who moves out and he's going for the Lemons here. Such a smart choice, and without the reveal on this army, he does not know that. Uh, he has no way of knowing, so he's actually getting geared up to defend here. He's chrono boosting his storm and his charge like mad right now. But there's just going to be a, a Lemon grab, and he's probably going to take a third base with this and pressure a little bit at the front, but getting that extra 500 mils is excellent. And there's that expansion that I was talking about. We'll be delayed though. Yeah, here comes the Oracle again, <laughs> just swoops in, takes the SUV, and goes back home. He even goes for the revelation here, while the Terran army proceeds to put some pressure on to Crank's natural. The Zealots already lined up here, the Mothership going in position for the Photonova charge. Here come those Marines, Photonova charge is active, but Last is still moving in, taking down a pylon and trying to ma ah, maybe even get a few pickoffs on one of those items. Yeah, the Storm here, a very nicely placed one. It doesn't hit anything, but that's because uh, Last moved back, not because the Storm was a bad storm. And this just buys him all the time he needs. And you can see that storm timing was razor thin. He barely had it out in time. He had the Templars pre-made. He had enough charge zealots to buffer. But the thing is, now Last controls the map, and he's taken a third base, so Crank will he's have to account for this. Also taking the uh, next lemons, he already has an additional mineral income by 500 because of the or uh, sorry because of the SCD earlier. Now he's getting another one, and that is something that I really like about Last. To be quite honest with you, I feel he's playing a great game here. It's a very good map sense. He didn't lose anything to the Oracle uh, noteworthy. He is controlling the map in general, takes those lemons, uh, just trying to solidify the slight advantage that he has over his opponent now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually really impressed by this. I expected someone who played, of course, with innovation in the past and who plays on a Kespa team to play a little bit more just only macro oriented, a little bit more robotic, but he's actually really taking this totally new map and using it to his advantage, controlling things early on with his bio army. The third base is going up now for Crank. Pylons are being cleared all over the map. Nice map awareness here by Last. He finds another pylon at the right side of the map. At least he saw it. Yeah, now he's going to he get it. Around and uh, takes it down. But what I have to say as well is that Crank is actually doing a really great job with his upgrades. He's already on the plus two armor upgrade, he's heading into plus one attack, and that gives him an advantage over last, so in a battle that could be the decisive point. But the bigger battle is of course going to occur between the Ghosts and the High Templars. You need to be able to just dodge those storms, take the High Templars out of the picture to win those fights, because this is one of the biggest assets in the arsenal of a Crocs player. That storm right there, not killing anything really, but will actually weaken this army, which delays any sort of attack or any aggressive potential. It has only three medevacs to heal there. It's going to take quite some time to finish it up. All the Vikings that we see, well, he only made two, okay? I thought he had about five, but 
It's only got two Vikings out, so those not going to be too useful right now. This Zealot run by, on the other hand, could be extremely useful. Drop in the main base, the Storm goes down, and the Photon Charge is active as well, forcing them back once again. And Crank, he doesn't skip anything with the upgrades. It's like upgrade after upgrade. There is no just wasted time for him. He goes for the plus two attack upgrade right away. He tries to send those Zealots in. This is exactly what he had those two columns for at the right side of the map that were taken down by last. So Crank's still trying to just pressure his opponent and put him in his place. Even adding the extra tech now with the robotic spade trying to go for Colossi. Yeah, that's the transition point. Calder, see this armory right here? Solely. This is the big problem that Alast has because it's going to be 2-2 before 2-2 is yeah. even potentially started, depending on how much he chrono boosts that. Think about how much time is wasted on those double engineering base that he has there. I feel that he thought he built that armory and then realized, oh my god, I don't. Because... I feel at this point, if you have a double engineering bay, you want to go ahead into the two, two upgrades right away. And with the armory now just coming up, I think he just probably clicked and for some reason it was cancelled. And then he realized, well, I don't have the armory, I can't go and do the upgrades, and now he's losing so much time on it. Yeah, most Terran players will tell you that when they start their second eBay, they start their armory at the exact same time so they can continue that uh, upgrade production. He doesn't miss a beat, though. The second his armory is done, he does start that, so... And he needs uh, you know, He's going to be about one cycle behind, but it could have been even worse. This is not enough Marines here to deal with this, at least not 100% because the Zealot is going to work on some of those SCVs. And he's going to draw the army away and try to attack the 4th base. Meanwhile, there's a Zealot drop in the main. Crank with the multitasking. He could have gone for the 4th base here and at least try to apply some pressure, but he takes out at least the Marines that are guarding the Zalnaga Watchtowers. While in the main base, there are still Zealots going to town and finally a few units are heading over there to chase them down, but like they are way too late. The Vikings are moving in to take down the War Prism and that is already going to shut down that aggression for now. But a couple of those Glider posts were down and now we have even another force of Zealots running into the third base once again. Crank is so good at multitasking and last, quite frankly, in this game is not. He's not dealing with the Zealots killing his depots, he's losing SCVs in the main. He's basically one aing his army left and right to defend and he's never splitting. These Zealots actually may kill the Ghost if they target. Even if he doesn't, he's going to kill so many SCVs. Either way, 100% worth it here. Yeah, and the Zealots are finally going down. At last, they will die. And just looking at the game right now, we have a bit of a supply advantage still for the Terran player. But Crank with this upgrade advantage is definitely going to give him a run for his money in the next fight. Yeah, and the tech advantage he has now with double Colossus production with range and the upgrades. Yeah. So this is, a, I mean, if you just look at the supplies alone, the army supplies, like, wow, Terran player's up 20 army supply, but I bet he's down about 3,000 resources and army costs with all the gas in this crank army. And also, this is something that he was able to achieve even though he was down 1,000 minerals, because last he claimed those two lemons, and that gave him an advantage in the mineral income. An advantage that doesn't really play a huge role anymore, since crank, yes, he's wasting a few resources here by sending those zealots in, but the damage that he does because of them is just so significant, and he also distracts his opponent. Yeah, and because that Oracle is still alive, he knows exactly where the Terran army is at any given time, so he knows he has an opportunity to come over here and poke at that fourth base again. The fourth base has been around for a while, but it has not been mining this entire time, so it's basically like he's been on three bases anyways. And double Stargates here, my only guess is that we are going to have a tran uh, transition into Tempest. Yeah. We've, we've seen this work okay in the past. Sometimes it gets a little bit weird, though. He definitely has a lot of options right now, and he wants to make sure that he has all of his tech trees in position. He could go for the Tempests here and try to just zone out the Vikings a little bit, give those Colossi um, just a bit of a buffer there. So a lot of options for him of what he could do. We have 14 Ghosts still on the map, and they will do their best to keep those Templars out of range and make sure that Storms are not becoming a huge problem. With the four bases against four bases, actually at this point Lass doesn't even know about the fourth of Krang as we just saw on the minimap here with this vision. But just those Colossi in general, eight Vikings going up against five Colossi. Yeah, uh, you know, I I like this, the way that Crank is playing this is like, I've, I'm better than you at late game I feel. He's getting, of course, those Tempests, he's got the Fleet Beacon on the way, these Templar will fall. Nice. But he's also getting preparation for nukes, knows he has cannons on the high ground, he knows that nukes may actually be a factor in this game with all the ghosts that we have out and late game usually end up trying to nuke some bases. A good wow. attempt here to snipe a Colossus, but doesn't get anything. Yeah, it doesn't get a whole lot, and eats a storm in the process. Once more, we have Zealot heading over to the third base, and his, his, the bunker just does so much for him right now. Yeah. Without the bunker, even with a bunker, 39 workers killed. That just shows how meticulous Crank is about attacking his opponent's economy. The bunker is preventing the worst here. Without that, last would have lost even more. And this pile into the right side of the map is just a constant cause of trouble for the Terran player. It certainly is, and I think this 
time he's going to do a little bit more damage, especially if Last just happens to be moving out. He has one really smart sensor tower in the middle of the map, but it does not spot any run by his coming around the uh, the southeast here. And he's actually going to get in there undetected. There's no base at the bottom right. And now he's going to town on these Marines. They're going to get killed instantly, and that's already making it decently worth it for him. And if he actually just targets the bunker down, it's going to fall so quickly, he can even just hold position on the SCVs. Yeah, the SCVs are probably going to try to block those spots and make the surface area a little bit smaller for those zealots, but a lot of SCVs will die if Frank micros the zealots. Currently, it's just going for the bunker, and with only two Marines in there, there's just no chance. The rest of the units are moving over, trying to take down the zealots, but so much damage already done and mining time lost. Crank on four bases himself, having a great income here and definitely taking a lead there. And just adding more and more tech, he goes for the Tempest right now. He already started the plus one attack upgrade for the air units. We see him with the Dark Shrine. The Plasma Shield upgrade even yeah. for his Archons, which is something that so many Pros players neglect. And that first Oracle never disappearing, still here in this game, actually having some utility. He's just getting a really nice composition, and the problem being is that we still have both players about to be maxed out, so the fight is going to determine uh, how this game goes. Crank is the one who has a massive bank, which he can use to just walk in immediately after the fight. He might even add a couple of gateways just to be on the safe side here, and to be able to walk in additional zealots. But at this point, he's looking pretty strong. Constantly harassing that third base, a constant problem for last, always has to send units down there, and he's on the losing side of the battle. Yeah. I mean, he's losing Marauders, a few of them, every time. He's losing mining time. That base to the bottom right, at this point, is basically only mining half of the time, so it's essentially a half base. He's always losing mining time, and he's spending money to repair the bunker. The Zealots just keep coming. The Tempest count is getting pretty high here, and this is all going to be about micro in this game, because look at the army supply. It's 30 up right now for last, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. I mean, you can't just say, oh, he's got the better army, because the armies are pretty even. There are five Templar, there are seven Colossi, four Tempests, a few Archons here. I think he wants to get more Archons into his army. He's waiting, trying to decide what he wants to build. As you can see, he's got so much free supply right now. And we have a lot of Ghosts on the other hand. 20 Ghosts in total, which is actually very scary. If those Ghosts get their EMPs and Snipes off, that could be definitely a huge problem for the Protoss player. I actually feel he overdid it a little bit with the amount of Ghosts that he has there. Yeah, it's uh, he might want to actually think about searching some more of those in the Marauders, because Ghosts... They, they have a decent amount of hit points. They don't do a ton of damage to armored units. There are 17 Vikings, too. That's that's pretty high. So the Colossi need to be very careful with how they engage this. Funny as it is, we don't see a single Zealots right now. Not yeah, one. not a single one. You're absolutely right, as you guys can see here. This base goes down. This is a big victory for last, who actually, if he wants, could pick up the Lemons on his way back. There we go. 16 Zealots immediately warped in with all of the gateways that he has, heading over to that third base once more. But this is going to be a very nice rock, paper, scissor match that we have going on right now. With the Ghosts against the High Templars, the EMPs against the Shields of the Army, then the Vikings trying to counter those Colossi and the Templars doing their job. And finally, last has even to just lift his base because he's like, well, I don't know what to do against that. The elements are now being taken out. This time it is actually Crank who moves in. And just the bank that he has. Crank is taking control of this match. He's at nearly 200 supply against 175. He has a massive bank that can always be used to just protoss the Terran player and warp in unit after unit once the battle has started. Both are dropping in supply. And talk about, uh, let's talk about mineral income. There are only 30 SCVs left. And he had to lift his base, who's missing some income here. 500 minerals per minute as a Terran player, this late in the game, the 26 minute mark. That's not ideal. He's now sending DTs because he knows there's no detection. Yeah, you know, the Terran player has to do something. I feel that last is not going to last very long if he is not forcing a fight right now. He has to do something. The battle is constantly going in favor of Crank. And round the Terran player is moving in, getting good EMPs off here against the army. The positioning for the Vikings is pretty decent, but all those Tempests are doing so much damage. Storms are going on the double time warp. Both are dropping in supply so fast, but last is actually the one who gets a lot of damage done here, but he's losing his entire army in the process. Still 50 supply ahead for the Protoss player. Yeah, Observer comes in here, he's just instantly remaxing his army, and I think this might actually be game because he doesn't have any answer anymore, he doesn't have any money left. The ghosts are trying to sneak around here and use their cloaking ability to do damage, but they're just not able to damage the Colossi. The Colossi just doing so much work, there was basically no Marauders in the army. And one of the reasons why Crank didn't go for the chase was because he didn't have any Observers anymore. He immediately went for a double Observer production. Those ghosts definitely a bit of a problem for him because of the cloaking ability, so he stuck with the cannons, he stayed close to the cannons, the ghosts couldn't move in, but Crank could chase the army. But he's still 50 supply up and he has what it takes right now. He has those observers in the game, he's on 3-3 three, three upgrades, the third armor upgrade is still missing for last. And the Protoss player with Tempest with Colossi is going for 11th again, he's playing it safe. Did you see how many Templar he just warped in? 16. 
You just know how much gas that is. Now, it's 150 times 16, and I'm not going to do the math, but it's... 150 times 16, that is 1,000? Th the, 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 yeah, 1,200, right? Is it 1,200? Huh? No, no, wait, hold on. No, 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 that's not right at all. Anyways, it doesn't 2, matter. 2,400. I thought 2,400, but then when you said 1,000, I was like, no, it must be half. I must be wrong. <laughs> I'm so close on that one. I almost... <laughs> I was almost really happy with myself. <laughs> I almost said 2400 because I thought, you know, times 2 and then divide by 2 and then 3 times 8 is 24. That's what I was doing. When I calculate something like that, I always do the 10s first and then the single digits. That's why. And then I add them up. No, that's because you're German and efficient, I guess. But <laughs> well, this game is essentially over. I, I hate to say it for last fans, but this... This army, I mean, not only the army supply, but like, if you actually look at I wish that we could have the army tab to see the cost of these two armies. Look at that. Eight Archons, eight Colossi, four High Templar. <laughs> the only way that Last is going to win this battle is if this new that he's currently building hits the army of Drank. But I don't know, man. Defense. He could actually just remill the entire army in two seconds if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's also true. And he has the planetary that finally goes down. Look at that range of all those Tempests. They are killing everything, taking down all the support, all of those medivacs, and just ancient history. And the Colossi are moving in to sweep before. Last is going out first. He is the loser in game number one.